Good evening. I'm Colin Knopf and I'm here to speak to you tonight about the many changes, actually very, very simple changes, that we as a society and a species are going to have to make if we want to survive. Built into each and every one of us within our DNA is a wonderful handbook for survival. It has all the information to determine what we as a uh, member of the species must do to ensure our survival and the continuation of the species. Sadly, in uh, the Western world, we've been ignoring that handbook and paying a very, very heavy price for it uh, in our health. And it stems right back to the origin, right back to day one. Uh, our industrial method of uh, birth, our medical model of birth, and our a high instance of intervention and uh, drugging of mother and child at birth predisposes us for a downward spiral of health after birth. Um, something that we know, the research is there to show it, but we're not taking any consideration of. And the reason for that is there's no money in health. Disease, distress, depression, dissatisfaction and death is where the money is. It's not really a consortium, not a conspiracy. <clears throat> it has one thing in common and that's a high volume of greed. Our pharmaceutical industry is the number two industry in the world as a profit center. And it's, it only follows closely on number one <clears throat> which is war and the sale of war armaments which nets a hundred million dollars each and every hour 24 7 so you can see why there's some vested interests in uh, what we do although it's certainly not what we need to do and it's certainly not going to keep the long term for us it will make a few people very rich now and a lot of people dead and that's what we want to talk about we need to birth naturally. Our birthright is exactly that. It's a right to a birth. Dicing and slicing and, and drugging is not birthing. It's delivery. A little more than, a little different than delivering pizza. Our OBGYNs, our pediatricians, our, our, uh, our medical industry is not looking after our best interests. And we are going to have to do that ourselves. We're going to have to make sure that our governments are not lobbied by the pharmaceutical industry and that we lobby them for health. Because health has no proponents, there are no people paying the lobbyists. There are no lobbyists. So the government takes direction from the pharmaceutical companies and all those with a vested interest, those with a greedy vested interest. We need to stop, we need to think, and we need to act responsibly. <clears throat> that's star behavior incidentally what we need to do is start looking at what differences there is between a industrial birth and a natural birth and the differences are vast built into each mother is a, a device that's in the brains of all of us called the amygdala which is the primitive brain and on the mother it functions uh, the same as in the father, it uh, helps us choose our mate, keeps us breathing, keeps us breeding, keeps us uh, healthy and happy in many ways. And when it comes to birth, the amygdala determines the time, the place, and the energy involved for birth to ensure a healthy outcome. However, when we walk into a hospital, uh, the foreign smells, the bright lights, the equipment, the ambulance from the staff involved in the hospital, and uh, some of the hostility that abounds triggers the amygdala to say, this is not a safe place for birth. It harkens way back millions and millions of years ago when there were no hospitals, and mother's amygdala would say, hmm, I can smell the lions, I can hear the lions we should not be giving birth now it's time to get back to the cave 
and so the process of labor shuts down voluntarily until such time as a safe uh, haven can be found to birth. Now when we walk into a hospital, there is no safe haven. You are captured. You have lost your control. You are, in the terms of the hospital community, uh, you're in a position to be deemed as a failure to progress, which means your labor does not progress because your amygdala has shut it down. But we have a vested interest in you coming in and getting out. We want to make our money and when we want to say goodbye. So the sooner we have you birthing your child, the better it is for the medical community. So we inject you with Pitocin, which is a uh, synthetic oxytocin. Oxytocin is the natural product made by mother and baby to trigger and control birth. It, uh, it controls the, uh, the, the large muscles to push down on the uterus and force the baby out. It uh, does a number of things in a variety of different uh, times in our lives, but at the birth, it's a significant part of the birth. So we have two things happening now. We have the amygdala shutting down the system, telling uterus not to push, and the pitocin is telling the muscles to squeeze. And that, of course, creates horrendous pain for the mother, and uh, all her fears then become um, realized because our media and our people in Hollywood do such a wonderful uh, job of showing trauma at birth and scaring the crap out of poor mothers, when in actual fact many parts of the world, I mean, it would be a lie to say there's no pain, I mean, that would be impossible. But the good news is our oxytocin in our, in our birthing cocktail of hormones diminishes the pain, creates its own endorphins to diminish the pain and in the long-term memory of, of that pain as well, incidentally. And so as a result, that um, birthing ballet of, of uh, the mother and the baby dyad and their, their complementary hormones, uh, the birth can be simplified and extremely uh, more comfortable than a hospital birth. So the pain in a hospital is much elevated. And in the process of the, uh, the continuous squeeze from the Pitocin, the mother gets no relief, she gets no break from the pain, and uh, is totally overwhelmed by it and, and, and starts to think of herself as the failure to progress that we call her. And, of course, her, she's lost control now, she's feeling uh, like a failure, she's at her most vulnerable time in life, and as a result, She's a perfect candidate for postpartum depression. But now we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to the birth. So the baby now is, 